Fortunately, most of the kids that we interact with don't need surgery, despite the fact that that's what I do for a living is surgery. Most of the kids I take care of don't need it, and that's a good thing. The vast majority of kids we take care of with scoliosis actually don't need anything. What they need is to be evaluated. They need us to make sure that their scoliosis isn't going to get worse, um, and, and then carry on with their lives. If you go to Google and put in scoliosis, it is a very, very broad spectrum of a disease. And so I want to make sure we're all on the same page. We're really talking about the idiopathic scoliosis, the scoliosis that we don't know why it's there, the teenagers who get this. Because when we start talking about other types of scoliosis, a lot of what we're talking about doesn't apply. But so when we're talking about idiopathic scoliosis, if I can get you to skeletal maturity in a young woman, typically 14, 15, and a young man, maybe 16, 17, and we use a lot of of, of discrete scientific parameters in the clinic beyond just the guess of age. But if we can get you to skeletal maturity, end of growth, with a curve of specific magnitudes in the upper chest under 50 degrees, in the lower part of the spine under 45 degrees, the curve should never get worse and you should live a happy, healthy, normal life for the rest of your life with that scoliosis and it should have no impact. In fact, there are fairly good long-term natural history studies that show the rate of back pain isn't any higher, the rate of maintaining a job and having days missed from the job isn't any higher, and, and people do very well with that. It's also why once we get past those numbers, the 50 and 45 degrees, that we start to recommend surgery. Because if the, despite wearing a brace or your best hope, if the curve gets bigger than that, before or after skeletal maturity, then the curve continues to get worse after the end of growth. And so then that curve, as it progresses through a lifetime, has significant implications on pain, on respiratory function, on how well people breathe, on their heart function, things like that. So that's why, why we recommend surgery at those cutoff points.